Hey everybody, how y'all are? Today's project is going to be kind of interesting and we'll have a little bit of background to it. Now I don't build rods. If I was going to get a custom rod built, I'd take it to the professionals like uh, Lee Smith. And you can get a hold of Lee Smith over there at ultimatebass.com. Talk to him and he will build you one of the most beautiful rods you have ever seen. Anyway, the other thing is that, but I will fix rods. I will turn around and I'll put a little bit of line over here on the tip of a bright color. And I do it old style. Back in the days, they used to have this thing. They'd set it back on the side like this. And you take one of these, this is called a bobbin. And you put it on there and you start it and you wrap it. And as you're turning it, it'll, it'll wind up on there. Well, the only problem is that when you have the butt end on the section of it, and I know you can't see this because I'm hiding it, but it walks. So I was constantly chasing my butt when I was doing this. Well, now i got a little bit more space. I kind of do most of my work over here in the workshop. I decided it's time for me to quit chasing my butt. And I made these nice little wrapper stands. They will support a rod. And now, besides the fact that I don't have to chase my butt, I can just sit there and set up just like this and just spin on away. Using the weight of the bobbin to hold it down when I'm, when I'm finishing up and everything, it's just like having an extra hand. It's the best thing I ever did. Now, if I'm involved with one that's a little heavy, it's a little lopsided, it's, it's, a, little, it's a little off maybe, a little off balance, or I'm just throwing it around a little bit, I can turn around and I can clamp them down. So this way they're not slipping anymore. This one supports about a six and a half, oh, almost a seven foot rod. If I had a, if I had a, I would extend this out a little bit. If I put the two before on it and I clamp the two before down and I'd run these on that two before. And then I'd be able to support a seven to, oh, probably about an eight and a half, nine foot rod. And I'd be able to do whatever work I need to be done with it. It's all by hand, nothing fancy. And I don't have any of the custom wrapping stuff on it. But if you just start now, and you want to do it kind of low budget, this was made with one piece, actually it was only like half a piece. This was made with one half of a piece of an old uh, bed slab. cut into six pieces, four inches long. I used one package, which is, I don't know, three, four bucks, of felt, which you could probably get it, get better felt and a cheaper felt at like a, a, a home store or you know one of those craft stores. And my bobbin was kind of expensive, but I've had that for like 200 million years, so we won't, we won't talk into that. We'll talk about this. I used two screws in each one. So, for a total of probably less than ten dollars, you can do a heck of a lot of wrapping. So, uh, why don't you stay tuned and we'll show you how to make them. I'm going to attack my dog. So I start this project out by setting my stop block up four inches. I got some one before hardwood. And I'm going to cut out six of these four inches long. One time like this can be kind of tedious, but with the help of a straight edge, a couple straight edges put together, so that they're kind of captured in there, and a T-square, 
we could really knock out a lot of time. Now, what we're going to do is every one of these is going to get a mark at two inches, which is halfway. Um, And then, okay, so the, the critical part is laying the marks out. We want to run a half, uh, mark down the middle, which would be two inches. And then we want to go three eighths of an inch on either side of that. And that'll locate the upright. Now we're also going to want to transfer that mark to the other side. So we got all these marks done. Markings for my base. Center, two inches, three eighths of an inch on each side, and what happens is, is that will center upright, just like that. Set them on the side. Now these other ones, all we need to do is do a mark of two inches. Mark only has to be really short.
Now. Come in. Half in. From the end. On each side. You'll see what we do with them in the near future. I don't do a whole lot in hardwood. <clears throat> and I've got a whole bunch of these Craig one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws with the thinner thread for hardwood. I forgot I use them for this project. And I'm taking a 3 8 inch Fostner bit and I'm going to counter bore a hole. And I want to make sure that that is deep enough. I don't know how well you can see that. Make sure that that's deep enough so that when this is driven in, it's, it's sunk in pretty deep. And I'm also just lining it up like this and just give it a little consistency to where it's located. It needs to be just a tad deeper. It'll be hidden inside there, so this way there's no way it's going to scratch the table. So what we're going to do is we're going to put, drill one on each end. When I screw this in, I want this to draw up tight. And I don't want the threads digging into here. So, I took a 3 16th inch drill bit and drilled a hole in the center where it lines up so that, it'll, so that the screw will come in there, will set in there. This way, when it's all together, it, the drawing and holding action will actually be pulling it tight from the top. So we'll just go ahead and drill those holes. an optional step. Uh, this is going to be the bottom of my V that's going to come down. And I don't want it to be a sharp V. So I'm going to take a 3 8 inch spade bit and I'm going to drill a hole in there. And then I'm going to connect the two lines and I'm going to cut that V out so it's kind of got a rounded bound bottom to it. The size of that is kind of uh, arbitrary also. If you're running larger rods or you want a bigger bottom to it then you can go with a larger bit. I just thought 3 8 inch would be a pretty good size.
And that's the end of the drilling operations. Now, we can take a straight edge. I hope you can see this. And we go from the end of that circle over to our mark that we made at the end. And we draw a line. What we get, I don't know how well you can see that, is a V that we're going to cut out. So now we're going to cut that V out. This is about the only tool I got that'll do it. So everybody hold their breath. Let's see what happens. Yeah, nothing's going to happen. Don't plug it in. million more to go. There we have it. A V. We'll probably have to do a little sanding here and there, straighten it out a little bit. Not bad for freehand. Okay, so now I mark my tops. After I mark my tops, I want to line this all up. Try to get it kind of square. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that in a minute. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put them about where we want them. Put them to the push. Put them where we want. I gotta get my square. Square. Get my official squaring tool. It's official. It says official on it somewhere. I might have to use my official squaring tool to plant.
We'll get out nice and square and pretty. Then, There we got it. Flush, straight, really nice, pretty. But we're going to have to sand it all down and everything. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to show you a little trick. Once we have it pre-assembled, To this hole, I'm going to put a number one. Make it look like a number one. So that when it comes time to assemble them, we'll take the two ones and put them together like this. We'll screw them together and they should fit square, nice, and perfect. Let's go do that a couple more times. over a few edges, put a little bit of camphor here and there, and I'm just going to do it for a hand. And then uh, after that, then we got to machine out those reeds a little bit, and uh, then we'll be ready for another step. So uh, let's make some noise. The most difficult cut is going to be this one, because that's where these two are going to form together, and I don't want to do that round over where they're connected here. I just want it to stop right there. So I mark the end of it where it would stop, <coughs> just by extending these lines. And then I took some white blue painter's tape and marked where at the end here, see, so that line up. Mark where this bit stops on either end. <coughs> when I go through, we're going to cut it to that point and stop. And uh, may have to cut backwards, which isn't a good thing. And the camera's in, is probably doing you know, like You always catch a really good one. Uh, let's see what happens. Before I make the snazzy cuts, I'm going to do the end grain first. This way, if there's a little bit of tear out or something, I should be able to pick it up on that inside cut. Okay, as you can see, I was doing a little work with the cup. I bought this cup, this stuff, for this project, think, thinking, not knowing what, what it was, <coughs> we're going to just piece of cup with some backing on it so I can stick it. Well, I was kind of bored on it. 
or it's, it's got a real stiff part in it. And that won't go into the bend. If I cut the stiff part out, I might use that for something. It's still got some saltiness to it. But I've got this here, it's soft, it's still it's stiff, which will probably work better for this. Alright. Now if you've seen all that. I try to keep it from being bored. So we sand it down. All of the all of it and saving the witness marks, the numbers on them. I got them all kind of shaped up and looking kind of pretty. About the best of pretty this one to get. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them together. I'm gonna put a finish on them. Because the next step is we're gonna have to use some contact cement or something like that to glue these on. So we might as well just finish it and seal it all and uh, cement it through that. If you want, you can keep this kind of unfinished, and this way the glue will stick a little better. Let's go ahead and put them together as I'm kind of putting away as I'm going along here. And uh, we'll go from there. Now it should be a pretty much piece of cake. We're just all we're doing is lining up the two witness marks with it, like that. And we're going to screw it in. It goes through, it lines up into a little hole here. I'm going to make these permanent. So I'm going to add a little glue to them to kind of help the screws out. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Me and Sandy don't get along as we used to. And I'm, I've been using a respirator when I think about it. I get my fish a gooey thing out. And my fish a leather gooey thing. I got my number. And we're going to put just a little dab of glue in there. And to tighten it up, it'll stretch it out. Make it a little bit more permanent bond. This is end grain. That end grain is so good. Now we kind of. Okay, let's put another one in on the bottom. Yeah, that's a little crunch. Till it's tight. All it needs to be. Just until it's tight. I've got it counter strong pretty deep.
my intention was that it was going to stop, the rondo was going to stop here and this was going to be flat all the way across. Well, my marks, for some reason, on me and my marks didn't work, didn't work out very well, so I ended up not, I ended up overshooting and it didn't look too good. So, I went back and I completely did a round over on them. And then I rounded this over and kind of carved, curved it a little bit and by hand. Or at least I looked this way. So it gives kind of a pedestal -y kind of feel to it. Kind of molded look. Not moldy, molded. And then come out to that. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to finish it. Put a couple coats of uh, something on it, I don't know what. And then we'll come back and we'll glue on the, the felt. Let it dry and show off the fine product. So we're finishing the little rub on slack mix I make up. Real thin. Hold on fast. Right. The great steel is like shot to things like that. Makes a can of regular cut shellac go a long way. You put a coat of it on about once every 10 to 15 minutes. So you put two or three coats on it. And they come out looking pretty nice. As for what the stain is in it, I have no idea. I have a uh, Three or four of them over there. I just grab a couple and mix them together. I don't like the way it looks. And I'll uh, add something else to it and see what happens. And all I'm doing is just cutting with these inches of alcohol. Uh, I don't think about it when you cut it thin like that. It's pretty forgiving. It comes along. Usually. Get soaked in pretty good. Even though as humid as it is, this lumber is pretty thirsty. <coughs> so I'm going to put a couple more coats on this and I'll leave it sit overnight to make sure that everything is completely cured. And then we'll come in here tomorrow and we'll put on the final, do all the final work on it. Well, I couldn't leave well enough alone. I kept coming out here and everything, and within an hour or two, these guys were completely dry to the touch. So I decided I, I was going to try to felt off camera. 
And uh, I'm not really happy with the way the felt is because it's too thick. I can't get it to roll over right. Uh, I think that you probably would be better off with getting uh, just a regular sheet of felt from a craft store. I stuck it on with uh, contact cement and they're holding, they're holding very well. And they will give a nice soft bearing surface. I took the other sheet that was like, it was hard, it was like almost like a board. It was hard to cut even, like, like old carpet. And I cut them into sizes to fit on the bottom. So this way now they're not going to mar, if you're going to do this on, on the kitchen table, it's not going to mar anything. Uh, it, they set good by themselves, as you can see. And this is a walleye rod. I don't even know what it is. It's a South Bend walleye rod. So don't beat it up. It will support the rod once you get it. And it's set. And without even adding any type of additional stuff, I can turn with this. No problem. It's a two-piece rod, so if I wanted to work on the tip, I can actually just take it apart and put it in there and, and turn with it. But, if there's a, an issue with it, with stability, it's not that hard to put a clamp on a couple of them. And clamp them down to the table. Now they're not going to go anywhere. And this guy here, you can move wherever you want it to help support whichever one you're working on. Like I said, this isn't... If you're going to build one, or build a rod, and you buy a kit rod and you want to see if you can... You want to see if you, you can do it. Putting one of these together like this is a pretty inexpensive way to get started. But if you plan on building and continuing the hobby, then it's better just to invest in, in, in a, uh, a rod wrapping setup. Although if you're just doing repair work, or like I do, I will take and I will turn the tip and I'll put thread on it and then I'll put a real bright color on it so this way I can see it at night or something like that or just just fixing a guide this is more than enough for me and it works fine <coughs> so there's an alternative another thing that this is good for is an extra one you may want to get one more but let's say for example you are turning or you're working something and uh, you're epo you epoxy. Well, you can come in there and every so often you give it a turn. And by doing that by hand, you help the epoxy build up. Or you can get a, an epoxy, a, a motor, mount, uh, what they call a, a dryer motor, mount a dryer motor on here on the one. And you can set it up. If you want it longer, all you do is just clamp a 2x4 underneath it, put these on top of that 2x4, clamp them on, and you can extend this as long as you want. If you want, you can make 4 or 5. You know, it, it's, it's an open, open end. I think the next time around, I'm going to go, gonna go and I'm going to add two inches to them. I'm going to make them six inches wide and six inches tall. But that's because I use saltwater rods and I want a little more clearance on them. This is like a really good size for, bass, for a bass rod. Uh, yeah. Let's put that on there. Make it look like an advertisement. So, so there it is. It was done in a day, and uh, <coughs> it's now about I don't know, seven, eight o'clock. Oh, it's nine o'clock at night, and it's done. It'll just I just leave it set and cure, and everything will be all fine and dandy. And uh, next time I need to do some rod work, 
I'll pull them out and I'll do some wrapping. If you like this project, hit the little like button down below. If uh, you really like it and you want to see what else this crazy old man is going to make, then go ahead and subscribe or say or something. <coughs> and uh, so until the next time, y'all have a good evening and a great day tomorrow.